March 15 to 20 represents World Sleep Week. It represents an opportunity to bring more awareness to the importance of sleep-related issues as they relate to COVID-19, infection, risk, chronic illness, and premature death. Now, ISD Health Solutions is hosting a webinar themed Wake Up to the Importance of Sleep, and this is happening on World Sleep Day, March 19. We are joined by founder and the CEO of ISD Health Solutions, Mr. Gregory Arnaud. Uh, he's a certified respiratory therapist in his own right, as well as a St. George's old boy in the form of Dr. Wendell Bob, medical doctor, board certified in neurology, clinical neurophysiology, and sleep medicine. We want to thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this evening. And Mr. Arno, I want to start off, though, even before we get into anything relating to sleep, give us an overview of ISD Health Solutions. Thank you. Okay, well, ISD Health Solutions is a group of medical professionals specializing in the area of sleep medicine um, from a multidisciplinary approach, also including cardiologists and neurologists and pulmonologists, um, just to be able to provide the correct treatment plans for individuals who have multiple sleeping issues. Um, we were put together as a result of seeing the need um, in the region of not having enough information and resources um, in this area. And Dr. Bob, I want to bring you in here. Thank you. What is it that we may not be realizing about the importance of sleep? So a lot of people don't realize that sleep is really important for our brain health and our physical health as a whole. You know, there are so many benefits of sleep. Uh, one is to remain alert during the day because during sleep, our brain actually clears the, uh, the brain itself of toxins. And that only happens during sleep. Uh, also, the brain clears... Uh, the, there's a particular protein known as beta protein, and that's linked to Alzheimer's disease. So we have found in 2018 that lack of sleep is linked to Alzheimer's. And there's so many other issues uh, that result from lack of sleep, such as cardiovascular problems like hypertension, um, also diabetes. You may not think that, but they, it decreases the effectiveness of insulin, less sleep that we have. So there's so many other issues. And the most, one of the most important ones these days would be our immunity, because the immune system is strengthened and the cells of the immune systems are released during sleep. And also it helps with the effectiveness of vaccines. So the less sleep we get, the less effective our vaccines will be. And that's really important with COVID-19. And that is something, and I wanna continue on that, not necessarily that exact point, thank you. And I will also ask Mr. Arno when we get back to him, but it seems as though so many things can be traced back to a lack of sleep. Is that, is, is there some, what are some of the other things that may be presenting themselves? You may see, you might find symptoms, but when you actually do your research, you realize, okay, this person isn't sleeping enough. Exactly. So um, one of the things, of course, daytime sleepiness, that is a huge uh, symptom. So people may be driving and falling asleep at the wheel, or they may be in an important meeting at work. And people might just perceive it as being lazy or not being motivated. But this can be a signal of, for example, sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is where you stop breathing for at least 10 seconds or more, at least five times or more per hour. And people don't realize that they're not breathing in their sleep. And it kind of sounds scary to a lot of people, and it is because the heart rate goes up, our blood vessels constrict, and we sort of go into this fight or flight mode that we don't really realize. And this puts us at risk for strokes, for heart attacks, and for a lot of other cardiovascular problems. And with that, bringing you back in, please, Mr. Arno, and we're seeing how many things can be related to sleep. Is it, is it a personal story? How did you get decide, okay, well, this is something that I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to be based, and because we also look at the amount of reaching out and different people involved because you just said you just spoke of some of the specialists that you are involved with. Um, where did this come from? To be honest with you, DK, um, the passion for getting into sleep came as something as a default, as me kind of falling into a position where it was necessary for me to learn how to treat people that suffered from sleep apnea with the position I was given um, within an organization here in the United States. Um, as I got a little more involved in understanding sleep disease and sleep apnea, um, I wanted to take a plunge in my career into a different direction. I wanted to get into medical device sales. I just so happened to start my journey as a medical device rep for Itamar Medical 
and a, ne a technology that was very new to the understanding of the, up to the medical world, and obviously had some objectives and pitfalls we had to deal with in bringing that to market, but it allowed me to gain a vast knowledge of all the different types of units and devices that were on the market to compare it to. Um, and at that particular point, having met a few physicians in the Caribbean over the few years I was here in those organizations, I saw that there was a great need um, to try to bring this information and or solutions to the Caribbean. Um, I frequently was going back and forth to Trinidad um, because some, some of the doctors, Dr. Trotman, um, Michelle Trotman, a pulmonologist there at West Shore, um, had an interest in getting involved with sleep and somewhere around 2007, 2008, uh, we engaged in trying to bring some information to the public as well as to the medical teams that she was involved with about the understanding of sleep. But it all came down to me losing a grandmother, to be honest, um, you know, my parents are all from the Trinidad and Tobago um, area on both sides. Um, my grandmother used to come to our homes when she used to travel back and forth. And when she showed up at our house, I could assure you there was a sound that I got introduced to that today I'm still not interested in hearing. <laughs> um, she snored like a bear. And at that particular time, we had very little knowledge of the understanding of what that actually meant. And I'm sure that Dr. Bob could also understand that you know, in Trinidad, we, we are just honestly a little too far behind in the understanding of certain disease states and the expertise of these types of issues just did not have uh, the ability to be something that could be accessible there. So it was a need to bring this there. Um, I started the business back in about 2011 under the name of Island Sleep Diagnostics. And by about 2015, I came to the realization when I started the first World Sleep Day event, I wanted to start with an entire new different brand and a new concept of how we're addressing health and not more or less be categorized as just a sleep company, um, but overall looking at health and trying to address all of the issues associated with it. Now, Dr. Bob spoke about breathing and, and, and sleep apnea and not breathing for about 10, 10 seconds, and you are a certified respiratory therapist. So I want to ask, how is that possible? Because sleep is, I mean, not sleep rather, but breathing is something that we do unconsciously as well as something that we can do consciously and intentionally. So how is it that we can just not breathe for, for a short period of time? Well, there are a number of reasons why this happens. Hereditary sometimes could be the cause, just the physiological makeup of the airway, the tonsils, the airway being obviously inflamed due to adenoids um, and different things, your tongue, the mass tissue or size of the circumference of the neck, um, that's some of the things, drinking alcohol, and I hate to say it because I know a lot of our trainees love to drink a little alcohol here and there, but at the same time, it does affect the quality of sleep and does exacerbate the issue even further because the muscles become very relaxed. And as they become relaxed, it now causes a compromised airway trying to get air in that while was awake, or while you were awake rather, the airway was open, the muscles were stiffened. Um, at this particular time, as these muscles start to collapse over and over, it limits the oxygen to the brain to the heart, and then as Doc mentioned before, it starts disrupting your metabolic balance, it affects your ability to reason, your brain is not detoxing the way it should, it's causing you to gain weight, issues with managing glucose, you know, hypertension starts to set in, and before you know it, you don't find out about it, unfortunately, until the situation that happened with my family, until I lost my grandmother to this concern, and finding out after the fact many years later, which caused the burden in my heart to bring this information to Trinidad and to the Caribbean, but at the same time, these things could easily be treated today, and there are so many solutions that are available, and we're bringing these things to the market and to the organizations that we work with as solutions to help their own employees. So that we know we're only as good as our employees and our teams and our families coming together to understand the importance of sleep and how this is affecting us. And with that, we take a short break. When we return, we are going to be honing in, zeroing in a little more to the webinar that happens on World Sleep Day, which is the 19th of March. Stay with us, we come back with more. Welcome back, we are speaking about World Sleep Day, 15th to 20th is World Sleep Week, and uh, Mr. Gregory Arno, as well as uh, Dr. Wendell Bob, are sharing some time with us. And Mr. Arno, what is the webinar designed to address on World Sleep Day? Well, it's going to address the biggest gap I see in healthcare, and which we can realize that sleep plays a very vital part in our health. Um, this is going to help bring awareness through technology. Obviously, we looked at COVID from a negative perspective, but I have to 
take things in and understanding that it actually brought us to the point where we're now appreciating the ability of using technology the way we are today. As you can see, we are no, not even in Trinidad and not even at that beautiful beach behind us based on how we're dressed. But at the same time, um, we're able to now utilize the strength of moving information, training, education, awareness through the channels of, of the internet, social media, and at the same time, give some support for those individuals who may have a number of questions and concerns and just can't be able to access that level of, of care in their local areas within the region. And is it a matter of all places are closed off or can people still subscribe to it, become a, be a part of the webinar? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, we're encouraging everyone that gets an opportunity to get on this webinar, please do. This is not just designated for physicians to learn more about cardiovascular risk and diabetes, but it's actually for the, the laypersons to be able to take this information to their family and their friends and explain to them, hey, you know, maybe I need to tell you, I saw something the other day, um, the snoring, the issues that you're having, I see you falling asleep at work or maybe dozing off behind the wheel of a car or just the way that, you know, people don't realize how it affects your attitude because, you know, if you're a little grouchy all the time, you can't always think it's just their personality. It could be a little bit to do with how well they're sleeping. Um, but this opportunity for us to get on this webinar is going to be four hours of information that's priceless. I mean, as we know, sleep is priceless, so getting a good night's sleep. And at the same time, it's free. You cannot even have to say that for a moment that this was too much for you to, to afford to talk to these doctors, these specialists. Dr. Wendell Barb, I just want to thank you again, doctor, for taking your time today to be on this event with us, knowing um, that he's a triple boarded doctor. I don't know if you know and understand what that means to be triple boarded. And I know, I know he doesn't care for me to really bring the light to that, but just his expertise and, and the idea that he has the energy and time to even uh, bring to us together, you know, some time together to talk about what we're doing here in the region. Just gives me another reason to be grateful for him as well as our team that's come together to address the need that most desperately has to have a solution to this over the next few years. And with that in mind, I want to bring you back in, Dr. Bob. Is all sleep created equal? No, all sleep isn't created equal, but we try to get it to be created equal. You know, for adults, ideally, at least seven hours of sleep a night is what we want, you know, for optimal uh, physical health, optimal brain health. But everyone is different. And one of the issue, main sleep issues, actually, that many people have is insomnia, which is the difficult, difficulty falling asleep, remaining asleep, or getting up too early. And it's always associated with some sort of daytime symptoms, such as uh, you know, uh, daytime sleepiness, or as Mr. Arno mentioned, you know, irritability or grouchiness. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, it's really important that people find out what their sleep issue is. And one of the big or main uh, ways that we deal with uh, insomnia is through cognitive behavioral therapy. And this is where we address the attitudes and behaviors surrounding sleep so that we can get people to fall asleep easier, to remain asleep, or, you know, and to not, you know, wake up much earlier than they need to. And there's several things that can be done to help with that as well. I like the fact that you speak about not just seven hours, but I think you mentioned night as well. Is there a difference between, because I know some people talking about circadian rhythms, uh, some people talk about mm -hmm. man being diurnal animals. Um, is yeah. there, what's, what's the difference between getting your sleep during the day versus getting your sleep at night? So excellent question. So we are traditionally made, or not traditionally, but we're pretty much made to sleep at night, right, as creatures, because we have what is called a circadian clock, which is in our hypothalamus in our brain. So during the darker hours or the darker, you know, when it's dark outside, we have an increase or secretion of melatonin, which helps us to feel sleepy and that lets us fall asleep. But in the morning that starts to go down and it's actually stopped with sunlight. So sunlight actually stops the release of melatonin, which is the hormone responsible for making us fall asleep. So uh, light is not good. And that brings us to one of the issues with CBTI or that we tell patients avoid electronic screen time at least two hours before bed. And why is that? Because many screens have emit what is called blue wavelength light. And that's pretty much mimics sunlight. So when you're on your uh, electronic devices, such as the um, smartphones or tablets or computers at night, that actually, your brain actually thinks it's sunlight and it actually delays the phase in which you actually fall asleep. 
So in addition to that, things such as you know avoiding caffeine at least six hours before bed, uh, because that increases the adenosine, which uh, gets us to feel awake. So there's so many other things in which which can be done to tailor someone's uh, way to fall asleep easier and their methods for easier and more restful and deeper sleep. Dr. Bob, some people are going to get vexed with you. <laughs> you say, put, 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 put down my what? Maybe two hours before? But at the same the time, after, in, right. term, in terms of getting some of that information, Mr. Arno, who yes. are some of the panelists that are going to be there at the, at the webinar? Well, um, I have to say we have a featured speaker. Um, her name is Dr. Barbara Hutchison. She is born in Tobago. Um, she is being well received by her families and friends of what I hear since the article has been put out this week and people starting to see what accomplishments she has made. I, I have to once again bring light to her accomplishments being triple boarded in cardiology, um, bariatric as well as sleep medicine and also from Trinidad. So we're very proud today um, to show the academic achievements of these physicians and their accomplishments is just one area that we're looking at. But the other part of this is just the way that they're looking to serve and bring back and give back to their roots. Um, them taking the time today as well as through this week and for the next few years while we have the existence of life. Uh, we're going to try our best to bring as much information um, to the public. Dr. Kapoor, Raj Kapoor, I, I have to say he's probably one of the most um, educated men I've ever met. Um, his ability to break down um, the complexity of medicine to a lay terms of measure to people like myself even could understand uh, marvels me. You know, he's an author, he's an inventor, um, he's well known throughout the world, a pulmonologist as well as sleep physician, and he has a great message for us about sleep, sex, and snoring. Yes, I said it. <laughs> the other S word, <laughs> that sex has a lot to do with how well you sleep and how well you're able to perform, and men are being challenged today by, by means that they don't even understand and, and how they're able to maintain sexual performance as well as be able to carry out other functions that we have to do in different types of jobs and situations. Uh, we'll have Mr. Andrew Danu, who is the president of the Diabetes Association. Um, he'll give us some information about diabetes and its relationship to sleep as he's un also learning through the network of physicians and information that we're coming across each day uh, we're going to try to do a, a research study here in Trinidad um, to help us understand the relationship between diabetes and hypertension and, and cardiovascular disease. But we're going to focus currently right now on diabetes since it's, it's the subject that most organizations have come together in the Caribbean and, or in Trinidad rather to try to bring some solutions to. Um, so we're going to do a study offering to all diabetics a part of this um, trial to get a free sleep test you know, a complimentary sleep test that's gonna be able to measure your sleep for multiple nights, giving you a full consultation to review those, uh, that information with you, and at the same time, help the rest of us in the medical field and around the Caribbean have a better understanding of the relationship with diabetes. Uh, we'll have Dr. Wendy Perot. She is also from Trinidad. Um, she is an amazing doc. She is a woman's health physician, a graduate from Loma Linda University here in California. Um, she is, uh, what, I, what I could say is uh, a jack of all trades. Um, I guess being a woman um, gives you an extra edge <laughs> in life. Um, and she's taught me some things already, um, just in the understanding of the hormones that are affected in women's lives and how sleep plays a major role. And even with people in, close to me um, that I've been dealing with just through this time of this seminar who was pregnant that I was talking to and helping through this understanding that that increased weight that they're putting on and all of the challenges that they're dealing with trying to sleep, uh, much less get around throughout the day, has a lot to do with the ability of their child to be born um, without having issues or complications. So, um, you know, there's so much to learn in that area. And then last but not least, you'll have to hear me for a little bit again. You know, I'll go ahead and try to wrap up this, this particular seminar, a webinar rather, and, and kind of just give back to the people that have gave to us, you know, talk about what we're doing with Massey Stores Pharmacy and how they're playing a huge role in allowing these diabetics unqualified clients come in and collect the night owl sleep testing device at their location. And um, you spoke about and you spoke about wrapping up, Mr. Arno, and we are about that time <laughs> where we have to wrap up, but we want to thank you so much. And naturally we see this this can only be the first step in a series of conversations that we have hopefully. But thank you very much, Mr. Gregory Arno, as well as Dr. Wendell Bob. And we're looking forward to it. And we've been put showing some information on how people can register 
for the webinar that happens on the 19th of March, World Sleep Day. Thank you very much on behalf of the entire news team. I'm DK Ronstadt. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night.